and I've downloaded now the Lysart's Cliplock Archicad file, which is a GSM object, and a what what they call an AutoCAD file, which is a DXF. Now a DXF is a 2D file, and that's going to be what we want. If we import the Archicad file, we see that what it's really importing is a three-dimensional object, and this is roof sheeting. And so this isn't what we want, not in this instance. We're talking about two-dimensional elements. Now, if we wanted three-dimensional sheeting, that would be great. But there's way more information than what we need there. So that's not necessarily helpful for what we want. So we're going to use the DXF. When we import the DXF, it's importing the profile shape. So this is the sectional shape, which is the one that we're after. And when we see when we import it, it imports it as a group. Now, if I don't want it to stay as a, a grouped or a linked drawing, an element, I want to explode that. Right click, explode into current view, keep original elements after exploding. No, I only want to keep the actual lines. Now, that's going to redraw that just as line elements. What I could do if I wanted to, to make that a polyline, would be to redraw it again magic wand, it just needs to know what I'm trying to do. We can see that it's creating some gaps or some holes because it's not quite sure what I'm trying to create. I can also redraw this if I feel that it's justified in order to simplify the element or let's just leave it for now in terms of lots and lots of lines that are grouped together and we probably want to make it a little bit longer so we're going to overlap it. We're going to take this and copy To create an overlap, let's just move this slightly to get this in the right place. And we see that re repeats. That's about enough of a repeat for what we need for now. So then we can move and drag this, and we will drag this to align with our edge. So now we have our roof sheeting sitting over our batten, sitting over our rafters. The rafters are going to be spaced. So what's the spacings of these? It depends. It could be 450, it could be 600, let's say 600 millimetres. And we see that's off the page now. And we see that the batten look wrong. Battens look wrong. So our ceiling battens look wrong because they're in the wrong orientation. So we now need to let's just copy this. Drag a copy. We now need to rotate our ceiling battens. What will that look like? We can see that we have an issue with connecting this as well. Let's do that first just so you can understand what we're talking about. Drag a copy and we're going to reduce it down to be a 35 mil batten. Where does that batten end? We want that batten to end slightly short, short of the edge again, so our plasterboard can run up past. So how does that work? I would then, for this to work, I'd need to move these along, so I have a double joist, or a double rafter in this case. Now what are we missing? We can have our barge. In this case we see that we have no overhang and we haven't finished our cladding and there's another detail that we need to think about. In this particular instance we find that the cladding is hard up against our wall frame but that's not ideal. If we want to have a detail where we have more insulation because we're not creating thermal bridging, we want to add in a batten. And so we'll take our roof batten, or our ceiling batten from the other one if we still had it, rotate 90 degrees, and we'll now place our batten outside of our wall. 
Now, if we're doing a horizontal weatherboard cladding, we actually will need a vertical batten. If we're doing a vertical cladding panel, so let's change this to a vertical cladding panel. At the moment, this is 18. Let's reduce that down by 9. So this becomes 9 millimeters thick. And instead of being wood, let's now make this FC, fiber cement sheeting. I'll just change the background to a light gray. So in this particular project, we see that it's clad with asbestos. Now we're not going to use asbestos, we're going to replace that with something. I'm going to suggest that this is cemental bare stone, and I'm using the 9mm thick panel, just from experience. And I want to batten this out, and I'll run the panels vertically, so that therefore I can have a horizontal batten. Now what does that mean? When I get down to my windows, I need to think through my detailing of how this works. Let's just run this down here for now, and then we'll grab a copy of this. Now how does this finish? We have our flashing run down the stud behind our batten over the edge of our roof, sorry, over the edge of our window frame. How do I want this cladding panel to finish with this. I can do it in a few different ways. Another way to do it would be to get a bit of capping, in this case a hard flashing, which will sit behind the batten. And I want to create a panel, which either folds back up, covering the edge, let's make that thick, covering the edge of the bare stone or sitting behind the edge of the bare stone because bare stone can be left expressed or it could actually turn down and the advantage of turning down is I'm creating a drip groove to stop capillary action and of course I can line that up with the outside edge now of course I can then rebate that if I want to and I could cork that, so that gives me a, a waterproofed, or at least a water resistant finish. So it might be something like that. Of course there's many details that we could use. And how do I want to finish this? In this case I could actually not use my barge board. I could run up my cladding. The roof cladding could maybe continue past, or the roof batten could continue all the way out. Let's run this out so it's aligned with the, sh the wall sheet. Maybe back just slightly. And then I could cap it. So in this case we might have capping 